everyone and first of all let me uh, thank all my subscribers who uh, during this last uh, 12 months or more have uh, supported my channel and have stayed subscribed so I'm very grateful for that. I needed to find some space at home to continue to work and uh, the only sensible reasonable space available to me uh, was my railway room. So it was with great regret in many ways that I decided to finish Deersley and to disassemble my railway and to rethink uh, my future uh, which brings us to the position I am at now. Hello everyone, uh, it's normally at this stage I welcome you to Deersley but sadly I've had to uh, dismantle my railway and I've had other ideas for continuing my channel but uh, not much came of them really but then I have a friend uh, locally called John Tothill who just so happens to be the owner of Canal Sidings and you can visit his um, uh, railway. I'll put a, a link up and he invited me to uh, do some scenic work and some model making which I enjoy for his railway. So here we are in John's railway room. Uh, the layout, this particular layout is called Inglethwaite. Um, it has one called Canal Sidings which is why the um, the channel is called Canal Sidings but uh, at, the, it, at the moment anyway it's not part of Inglethwaite which is the one he's working on and the one we should be talking about. So I've gone from Deersley which is in width about that to Inglethwaite which is more than I can stretch. In fact the nice thing with this from my point of view is that it's a continuous loop so at long last I can uh, sit and watch some trains go by, which I'm really looking forward to. Well, hello everyone. Um, quite a change not to see me on my own channel, but to uh, see my own <laughs> railway room. Um, yeah, as David has already spoken to you, we've decided to uh, collude on my channel to uh, um, so that I can get my railway moving quicker and get some... Uh, signaling sorted out which is something that's taking far too long and while i'm doing that i'm not getting anything done on scenery and i'm not getting anything done on locomotive preparation putting dcc into them etc so uh, i won't go too much into that i am going to be doing the technical side and david's going to be doing the scenery as i think he said so basically next time you see me i'll be back on my own channel I will show you what I have done and talk to you about what I'm going to be doing. But in the meantime, on this channel, what we're going to do is uh, just show you some of the things that David has started doing uh, to make this railway come to life a little bit quicker. Something else we've been looking at is how we're going to light this railway. And uh, the most important thing is to try and get even light using LED strip lights that you can buy. I've set some up on this area of the railway which was never very well lit. What I found now is that with about seven or eight watts of LED lighting we can get a much better light. And I've got a little control here that I can use and I'll gradually turn it up. You can see the effect. That's as dim as it goes and we can come up slowly we can have any of these light levels to probably about there, which is what we think is uh, a good daylight scene. Um, these little devices come from Amazon and I'll show you those now. And what I use to control the lights are these dinky little things here from Amazon. I'm sure you can get them in other places. And what they allow you to do is use a 12 volt power supply and using the control here with the knob they kindly supply as well you can actually adjust the lighting from nothing up to the maximum that you will get at 12 volts okay so we've actually started some scenery and this end of the layout 
is going to be a bridge span across from there to there. So we've actually started our landscaping in this area. It's uh, just a fairly standard way using plaster, plaster bandage of uh, forming a little uneven surface on the banks here. And then we've used scatter materials of various shades of green and various sort of lumpiness uh, shaped bits in here. Nothing, no bushes or trees yet, but on this side, we've made, we've allowed for a, like a footpath, a farmer's access, if you like, some little sort of track along here. This bit in the middle is a river. And I've painted this with a, a, a feeling of depth, hopefully of darker tones in the middle and sort of lighter tones to represent the shallows uh, on either side. So here it's more of the same, exactly the same method of applying the, the scenic materials. And over here though, we've got a single laned road. We've got to finish off various bits with more um, scatter material and so on. But uh, with the lights on, like you just saw John uh, demonstrate, uh, we can put the lights on here and um, we'll show you that just to finish. So there you have it. Um, that was an indication of uh, some of the videos you're hopefully going to see um, on the uh, new joint venture of David doing things like the scenery in his uh, great way and me doing the technology which you can't see much of at the moment but I will be getting there. Yeah, thank you, John. No, it's been a real pleasure coming down here and working on the railway. We've been doing it for a little while now, so we think we're uh, well up to uh, producing some videos on this. So uh, this is just a taster. I hope you enjoy what's to come. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, please subscribe on uh, my channel or on John's channel. So you can find more from me on the Canal Sidings Model Railway channel. Link in the description. And you can find uh, more from me on this channel. So with that, uh, I hope you'll join us and thank you very much for watching. Bye.